So hi, um, my name is Henning. So um, I'm actually some kind of an amateur here. So well, I have um, a background in information theory and also in um, cryptography and IT security, but that doesn't matter that much here. So here, just consider me as an amateur. Um, yeah, so I will just go on ahead. So um, I will just go through the transmitter, the channel, and the receiver briefly um, and show you what it is. But you can sit back and relax. It's pretty, pretty basic. It's not something complicated. And um, I, c I actually hope that uh, one will use it later on, maybe for a lecture or something. Um, yeah, that would be great. So OK, what is ALS? Well, it's the Alois uh, transmitter in the center of France. You, see maybe, you maybe see the red dot there. Um, and um, unfortunately, you will not be able to receive it here. It's just too far away, unfortunately. Um, so it's been on like uh, for several uh, you know, decades already. So um, it's uh, like uh, it has been transmitted since uh, 1980. Um, and it's uh, driven by a cesium atomic clock. Um, and you will um, receive it at a frequency of uh, 162 kilohertz, which is pretty low frequency. Um, it has a relatively uh, small bandwidth, and um, it's pretty strong. So you can actually receive it uh, like uh, about 3,500 kilometers from there. So that should roughly reach um, maybe Iceland and Greece on the other side. Um, yeah, and that would be about 2,000 and uh, several miles. Um, but you will not be able to receive, uh, receive it here in uh, Phoenix, certainly. Um, it's a phase modulated signal, and yeah, that's, that's about it. So I can receive it pretty well in Germany. It's not too far away. So OK, this is how the signal roughly looks like. So this is one part of the signal, of course. So on the left-hand side, you see this kind of triangle up, triangle down, and then just a flat line. So that's basically a binary 0. Then you have some very strange signals. We ignore them for the moment. And then in the end, we have like going up, going down, going up, going down, going up. That's a digital 1. And you have just an entire um, second covered by, like, from 0 to 1,000, roughly, in this uh, graph there. Um, and um, yeah, so this also will be the bits for each minute. So you will have 60 bits in total. Um, and then there is this very strange stuff in the middle um, that's actually uh, not specified in any, um, uh, yeah, there is no specification for that. But I realized, OK, that's apparently the second, so you can actually find, um, you can see here, for example, that's the 47th second in the minute. So I had to actually brute force that one uh, out of the signal. Um, yeah, that was uh, quite some, I need quite some time to, to find that out. Um, yeah, so um, if you look closer into that, you will see that um, like the slope of the signal is like, at the first it's plus one, minus one, minus one, plus one, zero, zero, like if you look at the start. We will actually use this kind of derivative signal later on. Just keep that in mind, please. So um, yeah, that was basically the transmitted signal. You, uh, so that, that will be uh, received then later on. But first of all, let's uh, take it through the channel. That's a pretty basic channel. And it actually resembles the actual channel. So you see this is just a simulation. But uh, the real signal looks pretty much the same. Um, yeah, so we ha we'll have the um, signal that we've just seen. Um, it's um, um, submitted on the frequency or modulated up to the frequency of 162 kilohertz. Then there will be a slight attenuation, of course. Um, it's basically pretty, pretty slow fading. Um, you hardly see any difference over several minutes uh, when it comes to the strength of the signal. Then we have, uh, at least in my case, I receive some um, in independent impulsive interference. So just like this kind of, well, it looks like a heart bleed signal to me, actually. Um, so we see some kind of spikes. Um, and those interferences can be somewhat disruptive, disruptive sometimes. Um, yeah, and then, of course, we have noise. So I will not show you the flow graphs for that. Um, but if you are interested, you can, of course, uh, look into the uh, repository for that, and into the uh, flow graph of Gnu Radio Companion. So OK, now the interesting part, the receiver. Um, OK, there are several steps to be done. And um, I think most of you have seen such steps already. So I won't go into detail for each of those. There is the demodulation step. Well, that's pretty straightforward. I hope each of you could do this just by hand just in a couple of minutes. Then we have um, uh, time uh, downsampling. So I'll just use the downsampling uh, module of Radio. That's also pretty straightforward, just to reduce the complexity of the signal, of course. 
And then it gets interesting because um, it's a phase uh, shifted signal, so it will uh, drift off slightly and at a certain point at pi it will just drop down and this is pretty bad for reception, so you have to uh, compensate for that drift. And at first I didn't know how to do it. I uh, knew there is some kind of phase, phase locked loop and there are several components, but I didn't know how to use them, so I started to write my own kind of uh, drift, drift compensation. And let's briefly look into that. Um, so I want to um, get rid of those uh, yeah, spikes at uh, pi and minus pi. So I simply computed the average over a longer time so that I can see, okay, there is a mean value is raising, and I simply um, um, sub subtract, uh, subtracted from the uh, signal itself. It's pretty clear, and it works, so the blocks are just seen there. So I waited a little bit so that it's not like heavily going down, but it's like smoothly staying like on the line, and we will see the signal as we want it. Um, later on, I realized, okay, I could also use the PLL carrier tracking block with a very, very, very low frequency. But, well, you learn afterwards, and this is what I wanted. I wanted to learn something from that. Um, so if you want to, to download it and play it, um, you will see that you have to change uh, the parameters a little bit uh, so that, um, uh, that, that it fits and that, that the uh, phase is actually uh, compensated. Um, so I can't uh, take a parameter for everyone, so it depends on the CPU of your computer. So um, furthermore, the next step is, okay, I have to synchronize the signal. And um, I took it into like a separate block that I wrote in Python. And um, I basically just count the samples, and I know that the difference between those um, um, ups and downs in the signal, uh, that there are about 25 milliseconds, and uh, that I can simply take some kind of tolerance part, and uh, as soon as I reach uh, the tolerance and the signal changes, um, um, I, I can see, okay, this is a zero, a one, a plus one, a minus one, a plus two, a minus two. Um, you can see this on the graph on the right-hand side. Uh, we have the, the phase signal, and we have also the, the derivative signal there, um, and it apparently works pretty well. So, like, we have a small plus one, a pl small minus pl uh, one there. Um, yeah, so I implemented that as well. I, I see that there is also some kind of uh, synchronization block uh, in GNU Radio Companion, so it could be an interesting idea to uh, replace that, that block that I wrote there uh, with this other block, um, but I didn't do that yet, but it works pretty fine anyway. Um, the next step is, okay, we have, um, I actually want the binary signal of uh, the zero and the one, and I just got some values like plus one, minus one, zero, et cetera. Um, so I actually have to correlate those signals with the known signals, and then I get these, the signals that I want, both the, the signals for the watch, so for the, um, um, for the time, and also those seconds, those uh, slightly more uh, difficult signals to, to, um, to discuss. Um, yeah, and I have to do this like for 59 seconds, and when that is done, I can actually decode the entire signal, and then we have a very typical time signal. So the next part is actually not GNU Radio anymore, it's just, a, it's just an ordinary Python script uh, where I take all the bits, I look at the specification, and then I get, in this case, um, 12, um, yeah, 12, uh, 12, 37, I think. That's just the best time to use GNU Radio, I think, on Sunday. Um, and yeah, that's, it was a Sunday and, and so on. So it worked pretty well, and I even could include some error correction because if I have some single bit errors. I also have um, a single parity bit in that, um, in that uh, specification. So this is usually not as sufficient to correct the errors, but in this case, I have the position of the error. And if there is only one error, I can easily correct it. That's a great thing. And yeah, that in, in the end, um, I have a nice signal. I have decoded it. It's human readable, and the uh, decoder is basically done. So um, the entire thing looks like that. I have the GUI, and uh, you see on top, this is the uh, complex baseband signal, uh, which is not yet um, uh, um, represented in the face um, representation. Um, yeah, and then we see the second part of this plot. We have the actual face, the actual face representation, and all those plus ones, minus ones, etc. And you already see there. Okay, there just in the middle, there's apparently a one. And then there are some symbols that re represent the, um, the second. 
down there we have those parameters that you can change and especially those ones that um, ensure that your face doesn't drift away. Yeah, and on the right hand side you see um, just a couple of zeros and ones received over a minute and one minute that has been decoded. So what are my insights there? Okay, uh, that's a pretty, pretty basic signal, but well, there are some challenges inside that and it's great to learn more about how to work with GNU Radio. Those code words for the symbols for the seconds uh, had to be um, brute force because they were not specified. That was also an interesting um, experience. I need like three or four hours just to count all those zeros and ones in that uh, signal. Um, yeah, then I had the um, antenna. I uh, just fixed it at my window. It's a loop antenna. Um, and I had to ensure that it's really fixed and it shouldn't move or something. Uh, that's pretty important that you get a really clear signal there. Um, Okay, what else? Um, it suffers from interference. I don't know where it comes from. Maybe it's a strong power line just nearby to my house. I don't know. Uh, sometimes there is no interference at all, and it's pretty clear. You have seen the pretty clear signal just a few seconds ago. Um, yeah, I've seen that the derivative filter is good and it works, uh, but it's not the best one. So I don't say this is the perfect receiver. If you guys here write a better one, I would be happy so that you show it to me and yeah, write a cool receiver and let's talk about it. So I think that's the idea of uh, open source. Um, I would be happy uh, just to get in talk, uh, contact with you. Um, yeah, what else? Um, I also did quite a bit of testing. So as you've seen, I've also written the, res uh, the transmitter and the channel. And in the end, I also built some kind of CI around it so that this is really well unit tested, coverage tested, and each time I uploaded it to G uh, GitHub, it will um, work fine and go through all the tests. I think that's nice because I've hardly seen that in any other projects yet. And I think it's important to have like a quality result there. Um, yeah, so far so good. Um, I also wrote a paper on that. Please read it. Um, feel free to, to contact me. Um, that's, that's about it. My repository, uh, repository is seen there. Um, are there any questions? Thank you. All right. We can have one question. Yeah, I have a question. Um, how does this compare to you know DCF seventy seven and what's it called WWVB? Is that right? Like, are they are they basically the same, or are they are completely different? Do you know? Like, well, this one is pretty f quite a bit different from the German uh, signal, which is more an on off keying signal. So, I've also a version of that um, in GitHub. Um, I don't know the American ones. This is actually a challenge that I would like to propose to you. So if someone is uh, happy to implement uh, the American version of a time receiver, please, please feel free. I want to know it. <laughs> has, has someone built that? Or just Kevin? Yeah, OK. Well, there you go. Speak to. And I, I just, I, I was going to say, I, I thought it's really cool how you saw, you use like um, stream tags for annotating the bits in the time domain signal. Is that how that worked? Or because you had like all the bits, like the symbols annotated in the in the time sync. It's just it's just for the um, so the tags are just for for seeing it in the plot. Oh, but I think it, I, th I thought it was really cool. It, it yeah. looks, it's very, you know, insightful. Like you can see like the waveform and then you have like the values right next to it. And I mean, also you uh, I mean, I hate, to, I hate to pull out the stereotype, but you German meticulousness in like documenting or like putting like comments under all the blocks. And it was very, very cool. Like, it was very, you know, it's like, um, yeah. Like Jean-Michel has the disc, does the two very well, where he has like just very, every, everything is just very, um, like there's nothing is left sort of in a hand wavy state, so you can like completely understand everything just by looking at the the flow graph and, and in your case even the signal. I thought that was that was very cool.